Hi, my name is Helen and welcome to my Stories from the Art Room. In the past two episodes on Baobu, we explored the comic and spiritual part played by this naughty demigoddess, Atelusis. Today, I would like to share the archaic history of Baobu, since Velva displaying images come in many different forms and scholastic research into them reaches far back to the Paleolithic. The concept of Baobu originated in Mesopotamia, gradually filtering into Egypt, perhaps via Crete, and then on into Greece. We start in the earliest epoch in Egypt, where a frog, toad-headed, or water goddess called Hecate, who had a frog as her hieroglyphic sign. And at the holy city of Hermopolis, circa 20,000 BCE, a frog-headed goddess called Hecate was installed in her own temple. Hecate was considered a primordial mother of all existence and was worshipped because she was one of a group of heavenly midwives who assisted each dawn at the birthing of the sun god. As a midwife crone, Hecate was significant in both controlling fecundity and regeneration after death. Goddesses had um, triple-headed faces like the moon, uh, maiden, mother and crone. As Baobu came from Egypt and was Persephone's wet nurse, she is connected to this frog toad goddess who was both loved and feared because she was able to perform many services. In Astrophanes' comedy, the frogs, a chorus of drunken Baobu-like figures are on the Sacred Way Bridge. They sing and dance on the way to the night festivals. The Greek goddess of transformations and the night is also called Hecate. Today, Hecate is associated with witchcraft, but as I mentioned in previous episode, myths are subject to change as they are on a continuum of religious evolution. And we need to remember Hecate dates from a pre-Christian time without a concept of Satan. Baobu's role was to console and reassure young women at puberty when they were faced with the daunting prospect of motherhood. Her mythic images bridge physical reality and metaphysical beliefs involved in transition experiences of puberty, motherhood and birthing, those critical stages of life which for both sexes can be seen as passages in and out of darkness. Which makes me think images of Baobu like these might have been used as talismans or protective amulets gripped while giving birth to give confidence. This frog image from Egypt is in the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston and is on a small curved ivory amulet found at a tomb in Nakada, 1784 to 1668 BCE. It is identified as a magic knife or wand used to make protective circles around sleeping spaces against illnesses, snakes or scorpions. Also placed in tombs to protect the dead from misfortune and a safeguard for women in childbirth. Psychology has suggested that Baobu and the Medusa Gorgon are twin embodiments of female sexual power, which symbolize the same part of the female body, the vulva visualized as face. Both are symbols of maturity, 
Baobu is the opening of the future. Her goodbye joking is an innocent promise that is stronger than widowhood or any sort of despair. The Gorgon Medusa is the primal maternal vulva, a taboo for the pubescent sun, a vagina dentata which must be dismembered time and again to prevent anyone from falling under her spell. But the Gordon's mask has an intrinsic womb function to protect, perpetuate and re-establish world order, which was why Medusa was often depicted as an apotropaic symbol on warriors' shields. Kim Anami is a person who would have made Baobu laugh because Kim can fire ping pong balls from her vagina. She teaches women how to strengthen their vaginal muscles and thereby gain various health benefits through using 5,000 year old Taoist practices. Kim does this through weightlifting using a jade egg inserted in the vagina. With Baobu's connection to childbirth and regeneration, I would say she is most probably connected to obscure, long forgotten rituals involving menstruation, once understood as wise magic blood, which then became taboo and her vulva exposure became perceived as obscene. Nonetheless, we have seen how originally Baobu was a metaphor or symbol for sexual energy and she was never personified in terms of seduction or pleasuring. In the next and last episode in this series on Baobu, I would like to share the meanings of other vulva de displaying sculptures which offer a surprisingly comforting, protective guard against misfortune. Also ways to laughing. Hope to see you then and bye for now.